Hello and welcome back. Today we're talking about residual connections and layer normalization. So just to recap where we are, we've talked about tokens or inputs. We talked about input embedding, positional encoding, multi-head attention. Uh, we had a few tools on that. And today we're talking about uh, residual connections and layer normalization. In fact, there's quite a few of them in the transformer architecture. And uh, the principles that we'll discuss today apply to all of them. Now, first about uh, residual connections. So here, if we zoom in, we've got um, that part of the diagram and the residual connection is this arrow over here in red. And basically what we're doing is, um, in addition to the output of the multi-head attention, remember those context-aware vectors that we get as an output of the multi-head attention, we're going to add them, we're going to combine them with the vectors we had before the multi-head attention. And what that does is gives us a few benefits. So uh, residual connections uh, serve the following purposes. They preserve earlier information. So in the process of multi-head, the multi-head attention calculations, we saw they're quite complex. Some things might get lost and why not add them back in to give the transform the opportunity to revise them and have them fresh in its kind of like memory in its mind. Uh, combat It combats vanishing gradients, a bit of a technical topic, we won't go too deep in that, but it helps uh, combat uh, this problem of uh, what's called a vanishing uh, gradient, and it also impro improves learning efficiency. Um, those are some advantages of using residual connections. Uh, there'll be a paper that I'll refer to at the end of this tutorial, and you can read much more about those things there if you like. Now, in terms of layer normalization, uh, here we've got our neural network, and over here on the left, that's the point in time, uh, or the point in the network where the multi-head attention is finished, or whatever preceding operation we had is finished, and then we've done the addition of the residual connections. Now we have some values in these nodes. Before we let them propagate further through the network, we're going to normalize this whole layer. So we're going to take uh, the mean, subtract the mean, and divide by standard deviation. We get these values, and then they propagate through the network. Now note this is different to batch normalization, uh, which was originally introduced for um, computer vision or convolutional neural network tasks. Uh, this is layer normalization and it is much better for parallelization if you want to get quite technical. So uh, the benefits of layer normalization it, is it stabilizes the training process, it reduces covariate shift and it works uh, for varying input sizes. Now we're not going to go into all these technical aspects, I just wanted to mention them. If you would like to read more about them, here are two research papers. Uh, one is on um, it's called Deep Residual Learning for Image Recognition. Uh, and here you can learn about these residual connections. And this paper is actually very highly cited. It's got over 180,000 citations. And uh, the second paper is uh, Layer Normalization. Uh, and you can read all about uh, layer normalization here. Now make sure to check out these videos on the right or the full course in the description to continue your learning. And I look forward to seeing you there.